Hello everyone, welcome to Planet Linux. As the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu has arrived, so have all of its various flavors, which implement their own respective desktop environment on top of the Ubuntu 22.04 base. The results of these flavors vary from fairly stock versions of their given desktop environment, such as Kubuntu providing a stable but rather vanilla KDE experience, to fleshing out a tailored experience designed to make the most of the desktop environment's capabilities, such as Ubuntu Budgie. But there is one flavor of Ubuntu 2204 in particular that achieves the latter better than any other, one flavor that has created the optimal user experience that is both polished and refined while remaining customizable. It is packed full of user-friendly features while remaining relatively light on system resource usage. It enhances its respective desktop environment in nearly every aspect, while providing a stable base that implements the best features Ubuntu 2204 has to offer. I am of course referring to Ubuntu Mate 2204, which has an immense number of improvements not only since the last LTS release, but also in the past 6 months since 2110. I'm convinced that this is the best variant of Ubuntu 2204, and I'll show you exactly why. We'll start with the new features and improvements, as there are a ton of them that both refine the Mate desktop experience and incorporate well with the latest features from upstream Ubuntu. In fact, just the visual improvements alone make quite a lengthy list. First, and probably most important for a lot of users, Ubuntu Mate 2204 includes full support for the new accent colors from upstream Ubuntu. All the different colors are here, each with their light and dark variants, while I personally like the look of the blue dark theme, I do have to admire the name of the Yaru Bark Dark theme. It just really rolls off the tongue so well. Bark Dark. The accent colors are applied to all apps, including most snaps and flat packs, and the same goes for the light or dark preference, which should also work with the new GNOME 42 apps that use LibEdWeta to specify a light or dark mode. The accent colors also apply to relevant components of the desktop, such as the dock, if being used. Other interface elements have seen a lot of visual polish as well. Panels will now switch between light and dark according to the selected theme, and the indicator icons will adjust accordingly to ensure that they're always visible. This is thanks to switching to the Ayatana indicators, which aim to provide a consistent look and functionality not only for the Monte desktop, but also across all major desktop environments. This means that developers only have to design their indicator icons once for them to look good on essentially any Linux desktop, at least any desktop environment that actually supports app indicators. On the topic of indicators, the battery applet now supports showing the battery level of connected gaming devices such as controllers and joysticks. Of course, a visual overhaul wouldn't be complete without updated wallpapers, and Ubuntu Mate doesn't disappoint. Besides the green Mate-colored variants of the Jammy Jellyfish wallpapers, there are also three AI-generated wallpapers courtesy of Simon Butcher. I think that these look really cool. But if they're not your cup of tea, there are quite a few others to choose from here. Unless, of course, you want to keep rocking that anime background for another year. Don't worry, I don't judge. Besides the visual and theme improvements, there are a lot of improvements to the Mate desktop and its user experience. One of the headline features of the Mate desktop is the ability to easily change the user interface amongst numerous layouts, including ones that emulate the layout and functionality of classic GNOME 2, Unity, Windows, or Mac OS. Now, switching between these layouts has improved reliability, so there shouldn't be any issues when doing so. Another outstanding feature of Ubuntu Mate is the heads-up display, which allows you to search app menu bars just by pressing the ALT key, much like the HUD found in Unity back in the day. This Mate HUD implementation has received a visual redesign that saves space and improves reliability. This has always been one of the biggest draws of Ubuntu Mate in my opinion, and I would love to see the project forked for other desktop environments in the future. Ubuntu Mate also sees updated support for third-party window managers, dropping support for the seemingly defunct Compton compositor, and adding comprehensive support for PyCon. 
When it comes to software support, Ubuntu Mate has you covered, regardless of which package format a piece of software uses. It of course supports traditional package repositories and PPAs, but also comes with out-of-the-box support for snaps, flat packs, and app images. Packages of any of these formats can be installed either by using their respective terminal commands, or by installing the software app from the More Software section of the welcome screen. Regarding Flatpaks, it is worth noting that while Flatpak is set up out of the box, the Flat Hub remote is not, so its software won't show up in the software application by default. However, it can be easily enabled either by running a quick terminal command or installing something from the flathub.org website. Still on the topic of software, Ubuntu Mate's fantastic welcome screen has a restocked software boutique full of updated apps for Ubuntu 2204. So I highly recommend browsing through there to find some highly regarded apps. As well, Firefox Extended Support Release, or ESR, has been added as an option on the browser ballot, which allows you to easily install and remove various web browsers. Finally, there are a couple new inclusions to the built-in applications. The GNOME Clocks, Calendar, and Weather apps are installed by default, and further expand the out-of-the-box functionality of Ubuntu Mate. Of course, if you choose to do a minimal install, then none of these apps will be installed. Despite the numerous new features, Ubuntu Mate 2204's ISO file is a whopping 41% smaller than expected, thanks to numerous efforts including the upstream themes that eliminate multiple sets of icons, and the exclusion of the proprietary NVIDIA graphics driver in the ISO download. Now there's no need to worry if you're an NVIDIA user though, as simply ticking the Install Third-Party Software box during installation will install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers if you're using an NVIDIA card. Now despite how amazing everything here is, not everything is quite perfect. I have noticed a couple small issues over the past couple weeks using Ubuntu Mate. Firstly, the Mutiny layout, which is supposed to emulate the look of the Unity desktop, doesn't seem to use the global menu in the top panel as you would expect from such a layout, despite other layouts such as the macOS like Cupertino using the global menu as expected. Rather, when set to Mutiny, the menu bars still show up in each respective window, which is unfortunate considering that other aspects of the layout are on point and the inclusion of the HUD really does make it feel like the Unity workflow. Now, presumably it is technically possible to manually add the global menu applet to the panel, but users shouldn't have to bother with doing that. Another small gripe is with the appearance page where you can choose your theme. Now that the various accent colors are included, each with a light and dark variant, the list is incredibly cumbersome to navigate. It would be much nicer to have a more compact section to pick your desired color, and a toggle to choose between the light and dark variant. The existing layout is usable enough, but just isn't the easiest to navigate when looking for a specific theme. Both of these issues are fairly minor, however, and don't detract too much from the amazing features found here in Ubuntu Mate 2204. It manages to incorporate the great theming improvements from Upstream Ubuntu and polishes up the Mate desktop incredibly well, providing a very usable yet flexible experience. And it does all of this with fairly light resource usage, coming in well under a gigabyte in terms of memory use on first boot. I truly do believe that this is the best flavor of Ubuntu 2204 that you absolutely need to try. But, do let me know in the comments whether you like this release of Ubuntu Mate, and similarly if you liked this video. In such case, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. If you want to learn more about Ubuntu 2204 itself, I recommend checking out my video here, and subscribing to stay informed of my latest content. I also post updates on Twitter, at PlanetLinux98. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time here on Planet Linux.